Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, July 17th, around 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. A coronal mass ejection is headed towards Earth on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, thanks to a plasma filament that destabilized off the sun, and we'll get to that. But the big story, wildfires scorch France, Spain, as Europe contends with an extreme heat wave. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, firefighters are struggling on Sunday to contain wildfires raging out of control in France and Spain as Europe wilts away under unusually extreme heat. Not that unusual. We'll get to that. But authorities in Madrid link it to a rise in excess mortality. Yeah, when it gets hot, people die. But when it gets cold... Even more people die. Now, two huge blazes that have been consuming pine forests for six days south of the city of Bordeaux in southwest France have forced the evacuation of some 14,000 people, including many that were set to spend their vacation at campsites. And unless you want to burn up, you probably don't go into the woods. Now, in Spain, firefighters supported by the Armed Forces Emergency Brigades are trying to stamp out over 30 fires consuming forests spread across the entire country. Spain's National Defense Department said the majority of its firefighting aircraft have been deployed. Many areas are rugged, hilly terrain that makes it difficult. Sounds just sounds like fires in the Rockies here. Um, But the heat wave is not going to persist. It's just going to last for a few more days, and it's over in the UK by tomorrow. Now... Back here in the lower 48, we're talking about flooding, burn scar flooding from in the Four Corners region because of this monsoonal activity. And in Flagstaff, Arizona, Governor Doug Ducey is ordering the Arizona National Guard troops to the Flagstaff area after flash flooding from monsoons inundated area homes. Take a look at some of this footage. County still cleaning up after this week's monsoon storms pushed mud and water into their homes. Our Vinton Blandon has more now on the help being sent to the high country. Flash flooding, making a mess in... Take a look at that. I mean, that is a lot of mud. There's a boat right here. In and out of homes in Coconino County, 30 men and women from the Arizona National Guard obeyed Governor Doug Ducey's order to head to Flagstaff. Most, Major Kyle Key says, were only 20 or so miles away doing annual training. We just pivoted those soldiers over there and then redirected them over here to the uh, Coconino Public Works right behind me. The major, a spokesman for the state's National Guard, shared pictures of the guardsmen working. They accomplished um, bagging about 5,000 bags, and they put them on 65 pallets and then shrink wrapped them and then got them ready for transportation. The governor's office granted a request Saturday made by the county's emergency management agency on Friday, asking for help bagging hundreds of thousands of sandbags. Pretty awesome work going on uh, over there in Arizona with the National Guard, so thumbs up there. Send some prayers out there to the residents that have been flooded from their homes. Now, for flooding in Dorney Park and other areas, the worst could be yet to come. And take a look at this slurry coming up through this overpass. Absolutely insane. This is what you get, soot and ash, from these burn scars. And this is only from a one-inch event. Um, in the area where I live here, just south of here, where there was another huge uh, burn scar here. Oh, actually, this is the pipeline fire in Timberline. Uh, and this is just from one inch. So the whole point here they're bringing is that these floods are from minor flooding events. What happens later this week, next week, when we see two, three, four inches of rain, it will be devastating. So they're preparing hard in Flagstaff now. As there's heavy rain in the Ohio Valley and dangerous heat persisting in some areas, Strong thunderstorms may produce heavy rainfall and flooding across much of the Ohio Valley Sunday. Large swells and high surf are likely for Hawaii, along with some locally heavy rain for windward portions of the Big Island, and that's due to that hurricane making its way just to the south of the islands there. Dangerous record-breaking heat to continue across the central U.S. and parts of the West. Now, heat warnings and watches are going to be here in magenta and in orange, so heads up if you're in the upper Midwest or northern parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and those regions where it's going to be very hot. Red flag mornings and heavy winds so don't be flicking any cigarette butts out the window now let's take a look at that gfs model and those storms that are moving through the ohio valley there indiana could be picking up some storms as well as down into missouri and arkansas so heads up even if you're in kentucky it could be getting plucky because those storms are going to move east and by monday 
the Northeast should be saturated. So that's good news for the Northeast. Now, total precipitation. Take a look at Southern California. It should be getting some much-needed moisture, albeit just around three-quarters of an inch, but that says something, as well as some precipitation coming in through Nevada there. So the Great Salt Lake area and the big dry hole, so still happening there, but big winter chicken dinner, the Southern. San Juan Mountains here are going to be picking up the most rain other than the Central Mountains, so we need that. It hasn't rained in about a week or so here. Anything significant. As we get back to the high, hot and dry weather in Europe and those wildfires. Is it really that hot? Yes, it is really that dry, but that's because of an early spring drought, and now we have a heat wave, which you should expect the end of July, maybe into August for this region. And there will be some record-breaking temperatures, but it certainly pales in comparison to the summer of 2003. The heat wave in Europe lasted for six weeks with temperatures from 38 to 40 C in many regions from the UK south. And the UK is going to be hot for a few days and everyone's burning up today, but it looks like by tomorrow, it's over for the UK. There's no more extreme heat. 2019 C is going to be the high. The extreme heat will linger in southern Spain as well as North Africa, but you would expect extreme heat in North Africa during the summer. And it will moderate as we head through the week, and by the end of July, it's looking like a nice respite from the extreme hot weather for all of Europe. So... No repeat of 2003, but certainly a repeat of fear-mongering from the mainstream. Now let's talk about the other hemisphere. It's winter down there in the southern hemisphere. Alice Springs, Australia, suffering the longest streak of sub-zero days on record as Greenland refuses to melt on schedule. Now, Greenland was staying above the 40-year average for six weeks, but in fact, Greenland has began to melt uh, today, and it is now below the average melt for 40 years. So this is some of the coldest recordings during melt season for all of the month of June in recorded history. But no one told you about that. And today is the first day we've now gone below the average melt for Greenland for the first time this season. And, the, and we are at the peak of melt. So from here, just for another week or two is maximum melt. And then after that, well, it's game on and the ice will begin to build in fervor. As we go over to some seismic info and new information um, from the Cascadia region. Now, this is the Kitsap fault system or the Seattle fault, which is a much smaller fault system inland from the Cascadia, but it is right underneath of Seattle. And that's bad news because the probability of a 7.5 magnitude happening on the Seattle fault is higher than a 9 magnitude on the Cascadia. And guess what it means? It means tsunami. So... And if you're living on the coast here and one of these events should happen, it is going to be, well, let's just say catastrophic. Here you can see we're looking at Seattle. This is the Seattle fault zone. And you can see all these Bayesian estuaries, which is very bad for a tsunami because as tsunami waves move into there, move into these shallow harbors, they, there's the earthquake, they increase the likelihood of the wave growing higher. And what they're showing you here is where in the blue areas, there's subsidence. In the red areas, there's uplift. That's going to lead to a tsunami. And then the tsunami is going to wash up Eagle Harbor and Rich Passage up into Port Orchard and cause massive damage in Winslow, Eagledale, Port Blakely, West Blakely. Linwood Center will likely be completely washed away based on this model. Clam Bay, not looking good for you either. Middle Point. Point Glover, Waterman. So a 7.5 magnitude earthquake in Seattle is all they need to destroy all the infrastructure on these harbors. That's not good news, and we're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you, which is why we share this information with you. So if you're interested, take a look at the model. It links you to the recent report here. And do your own homework and your own preparedness of... Tsunami from a fault that's running through Seattle right now. Seismic update. No quakes of note. We have an interesting rumbler here in Nebraska. We also have a quake up in the Arctic Circle near the North Pole. 4.5. But no other quakes of note. Standard activity. All is quiet on the Western Front. Worldwide volcano news update. Nothing happening spectacular in the world of all volcanoes acting normally, except for Krakatau, which has been increasing eruption for the past 48 hours. A 4,000-foot rumbler 
followed by a 6,000-foot rumbler, followed by a 7,000-foot rumbler just moments ago. So there could be an uptick at Krakatau, but no impending doom, which is good news. Solar update. Now, about 48 hours ago, a plasma-rich solar filament located on the northern hemisphere erupted and was responsible for a faint, slow-moving coronal mass ejection. The plasma cloud appeared to be headed mostly to the northwest and away from Earth, but there was a slight halo effect. Um, so some of this filament is headed our way, and it was mapped by Iswa here on the Signet Streamer, and you could see a direct hit with Earth late the 19th, early the 20th. So that would be the nearest time for geomagnetic storm, KP5 or higher, and it will be short-lived. Now, why am I bringing this to your attention? Because a paper coming out simply confirms all the things we've been saying for over half a decade. Solar storms have human health implications. And in this case, the paper is talking about heart attacks. Um, so solar storms are now claimed to have been causing thousands of heart-related deaths in some years. And these are solar max years, which is right now, 2022, 2023, 2024. We're going to see lots of coronary infarctions due to geomagnetic disturbances. And here's the paper that explains that. So keep calm during geomagnetic storms and take your meds, especially if you have heart problems, and talk to your doctor because you have the paper you can even bring with them. There'll be a link below. Now, goodbye, Comet K2. Next stop, close approach with the sun. We just reached the close approach of Comet K2 with planet Earth. It didn't get that bright. It's not that electric, and it's not that exciting. Comet C, 2017 K2 Pan Stars. As seen here, June 26, 2022, image credit uh, Gina Luca Masi. There we can see K2 not looking quite unspectacular. Not much of a visible tail or anything. This all might change during this geomagnetic storm that's coming right up the, in that plasma filament. If that comet, I didn't look at the position of the comet, is in the way of that filament in any way, it could recharge. So we're keeping a close eye, and I haven't seen the position of this currently. So I'm going to look at that and see if this could light up due to that filament. That would be fantastic. Now, it is going to have a close approach with the sun. It might burn up there, so we could see a, a little bit of a show there. could rip apart. But Comet C 2017 K2 Pan Stars, called K2 for short, made its closest approach to our planet Thursday, July 14th, as it passed just 168 million miles or 270 million kilometers from Earth, just beyond the orbit of Mars. The distant approach meant that K2 had a bit of dim showing. <laughs> yeah, it did. Despite its sheer size, the mega comet was first spotted in 2017. So we'll keep a close eye on that for any electrical outbursts as it moves towards the sun. Now look at this. Success, the first results from the world's most expensive dark matter detector. The only success is that they built it and they wasted a bunch of money. They're, they haven't detected any dark matter. So that's kind of funny that they used that. Now, bad news. The LA Times is just picking up what we've been putting down. And a new report warns about the environmental danger in solar transition. Now, I warned about this at the Crestone Energy Fair last year during what, uh, my discussion on the green agenda. And California just figured it out that they have no way to dispose of these toxic waste piles. And this is just the beginning. In another decade, we're going to have four times the amount of toxic waste. Nowhere to put it, no one to recycle it, and it is a toxic waste nightmare, period. And this has a lot to do with incentives. And now we have the Green New Deal and all this other garbage, literally bankrupting and polluting the earth forever. Now, beginning in 2006, the state of California focused on how to incentivize people to take up solar power and pollute the planet with photovoltaic cells. They showered subsidies on homeowners who installed these poisonous panels but had no comprehensive plan to dispose of them. They just told you you were going to save the world. Now the plant panels purchased under those programs are nearing the end of their life cycle. The problem is, when solar panels end up in landfills, components that contain toxic heavy metals such as selenium, cadmium, and other heavy metals can contaminate groundwater forever. So, it's looking like a bright green future for the world.
Another idiot moment. Lawmakers want the FDA to crack down on soap makers. Yeah, they're going to regulate homemade soap because all the other chemical pro products that they already regulate are so safe for you. Did you ever read the ingredients list on a cheap bottle of shampoo? It will blow your mind how they could put 58 unpronounceable chemicals in a $1 bottle. And why are any of those chemicals needed to clean your hair? <laughs> yeah, I use the homemade soap. My neighbor is a soap maker and, well, we're going to continue to make soap forever until we die, regardless of what the FDA has to say. And I think that is the way most of us are headed. We're taking back our sovereignty. And that's a boom. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. In a dystopian world where they're going to regulate homemade soap, at some point you got to put your foot down. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. Become a Patreon and support our work. We love you. And that's a boom.